Every believer has a voice, and it's the voice of victory. My God has made a way for me. I'm Kenneth Copeland, and this is the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Let's go straight into the Word now here on Friday's edition. And we're talking about the spirit of power. And now, I want to remind you, Jesus, just as much the Son of God when He was 29, mm -hmm. never healed anybody. Mm -hmm. No record of it. No record, no. And I, I, wanna, I want to uh, put my marker here in, uh, at Mark 11. But now let's go over here to Luke chapter 4. And... Uh, now, Jesus had been, he came to be baptized in water by John, his cousin. That's right. And, and I'm paraphrasing this, you know, and John said, no, no, no. And, and Jesus said, this is right. That's right. Things must be fulfilled, so you need to do this. He baptized him in the Jordan. And John saw. Mm -hmm. Now, let me remind you, Baptist was not his last name. No. <laughs> but that's what he preached was baptism in water mm -hmm. for the repentance. In Hebrew, it would have been translated as John the Immerser. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, not the baptizer, the Immerser in water. Yeah. So, the Christ is not Jesus' last name, but that's... that's what he preached. Now notice this. Um, he, he went out into the, he was, the, John saw the Spirit of God land on him mm -hmm. like a dove would land. So then he went straight out into the, into, into the wilderness to be tempted. And he came back. I want you to notice something now. Now he's, he, he's already been baptized in water. He's already been immersed in the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. He already had the Spirit of God. He's born of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. That's right. But he hadn't been anointed yet. That's right. So now notice this. Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about, and he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up toward to read. There was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. He found what you and I know as the 61st chapter of the book of Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Glory to God. Amen. 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 The Spirit of the Lord is, uh, He's always in Him. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He hath anointed me to preach. Glory to God. God, hallelujah. He's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. He has sent me to preach deliverance to the captives and to preach recovering of sight to the blind and to set at liberty them that are bruised and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord or the great jubilee or that supernatural debt cancellation for yeah. those of you that don't know. <laughs> Glory to God. And close the book. Yes, and he closed the book on it. And my father in the faith, Oral Robert, I'll tell you when I heard him preach that, I just, it just lit up on the inside of me. 
He said, Jesus said to every poor man, I'm here. I'm your Jubilee. You don't have to be poor anymore. I'm every sick man. You don't have to be sick anymore. Every blind man, you don't have to be blind anymore. And every captive man, if you're captive to drugs, if you're captive to sickness and disease, if you're captive to bad habits, you don't have to be captive anymore. You're free. And I thought, yes, 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 yes. Sign me up. Yes, sir. Sign me up. That's the, the great gospel. jubilee. The spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me. We've been talking about power. He's, been, he's anointed right there. Elijah and Elisha. Oh, yeah. One would come before the Messiah in the spirit of Elijah. That's right. And that's what John did. Remember Elijah and Elisha? Well, Elisha's name, Elieh, who is Elijah, Elisha's name means salvation. So salvation will come after. And what did he do? He saw, the, he saw him taken up. He saw the mantle fall. And what did he say? Where's the Lord God or where's the power of the God of Elijah? And, and the river parted and all the other prophets saw it. That's exactly a type and shadow of what happened that day at the river. Yes, it is. And it was in the, near the same area, in the same place, where John will, in the spirit of Elijah, anoint Jesus by immersing him in the river, the same river that Elisha will walk over. And I just love the accuracy of the Word of God. But that's a natural transference of power. And that's what happened to Jesus that day. Praise and then God. Jesus now, after his resurrection, will transfer that same power to us. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's why we walk in this. This is why we've got to know our covenant. That's why we've got to speak the word only. That's why we've got to, like he healed people, like he was teaching me, rebuke the sickness rather than praying for it. Mm -hmm. Begin to rebuke it like I did that tree in Mark chapter 11. Yes. yes. Because yeah. that's the way this thing works. That's right. Now let's go back over there to that. And I want you to get in there. Oh, and, and I, you brought this up, and I, I want to touch on this. In the last chapter of the book of Mark, mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> verse 14, afterward he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat, upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. So he wasn't all that sweet and nice about this. Not then. And this is when they turned into apostles. You go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized will be saved. He that believes not shall not shall be damned or condemned. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. In my name they shall speak with new tongues. In my name they'll take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it'll not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And he didn't mention prayer one time. No. Nope. Because you're walking in power and authority. Yes. That's a delegated authority. He didn't say not do it. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yes. But no, he Jesus brought laid, Jesus up, laid hands on the sick. They will speak with new tongues. Mm -hmm. He was setting them up for 50 days later. That's right. Right then. Mm -hmm. Well, he's prophesying it into them. Yes. Right then. It's like he gave them orders. He gave a buck private orders to go tell a major what to do. And that's exactly what he's doing. He gave us, that's marching orders. Yes, it is. Right there on exactly what you're going to do. Now, so in Mark 11, he curses this tree. That's the last week of his life. And he is the second Adam. He curses this. Jesus spoke, and what he spoke, those are not wonderful, sweet, edifying words to that tree. No. I mean, if you're that tree, that's not nice to hear. Now, notice, notice this. They were afar off. Yeah. It says so. Mm -hmm. And they heard him. I mean, he was upset. Mm -hmm. Well, Brother Copeland, didn't he know it wasn't time for a fig? Sure he did. The tree was full of leaves. So figs should have been there. Read it in the classic Amplified, and it, it, we don't have time to go there today. So 
What's the first thing that Adam did when he hid himself from the Lord? Adam goes. Let's see. What? He real. made him a fig tree suit. That's exactly right. <laughs> fig leaf suit. <laughs> they sewed fig leaves together. <laughs> the second Adam is coming by saying, no more covering sin. He's cursing the works of the enemy. He's not cursing yeah. a tree. That's right. He's rebuking the works of trying to cover <laughs> your sin with leaves. And that's why he did what he did. It represented the barrenness of the law. These leaves will never redeem you. It's the fruit. He said, I am the vine, you are the branches. <clears throat> the fruit happens out on the branches. That's right. And that's us. This is a new system. And new he way took of doing this things. opportunity to point out how the invisible force of faith yes. works and how powerful it is. Verse 20, in the morning as they passed by and saw the fig tree dried up from the roots, Peter, calling him to remember, saith unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which you cursed is withered away. Now, Jesus didn't, he didn't mention the fig tree anymore. Mm -hmm. Have faith in God. That's it. Right. Or have the faith of God. For verily I say unto you, whosoever shall say, whosoever shall say, have faith in God. Have the faith of God. Now we're back to Genesis 1, and yes, God said. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. God said, and we're back to the fig tree. <laughs> <laughs> and he's about to become a curse on a tree. Yes, sir. Himself in just a few yes, days. Yes, sir. Yeah. Six days, six, seven days. Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, in his inner man, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. That shall believe that those words he says or she says will come to pass. Now there's the hang up right there. You stay in this book until faith comes, but shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass. He, sh he will have whatever he says, but he's not done yet. Mm -hmm. He put that same thing in operation. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. When you pray, believe that you receive them, you shall have them. And when you stand praying, forgive if you have ought against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespass. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Give us this day our daily bread. And what? As we forgive. That's it. There you have it. The, you know, hey, you fooling yourself. You're praying there. Mm -hmm. It ain't working. Get up and go fix it and then come back. <laughs> when you stand praying, it's all part of the prayer. That's right. That's right. He's walking into Jerusalem after that incident in verse 27. Yes. They came again to Jerusalem. He was walking in the temple. They came to uh, came to him, the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. I love this right here, 28. Say unto him, by what authority, authority doest these things? And who gave you this authority to do these things? And what did he take him to? He took him right back to where he got anointed. Mm -hmm. He says, Jesus answered and said to them, well, I'll ask you one question and answer me, and I will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, was it from heaven or of men? Answer me. That's where he got the anointing. So he took him right back to that place. Took him back to the moment of power. The moment of power. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so even with us, Brother Couple, when we're facing something in our body, when we're facing something in our finances, go back to the moment of power. Go back to Acts 2. Go back to when you got filled with the Holy Spirit. Go back to the moment when Jesus walked out of the tomb 
and put yourself and your identity into that moment of power. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead now dwells in me. Yes. Christ within me, my hope of glory. There it is. And I was so... Uh, Mac and Lynn Hammond. Mac Hammond has been a member of, the, uh, of our board for many years. Mm. And at the minister's conference, oh, he stirred me up. <laughs> he said, when I lay hands on someone that's sick, he said, I immediately go back to Christ within me, my hope of glory. He, the healer is in me as I lay my hand. Right. Which goes to don't touch them till you're ready. To, yeah. And we have, we have a, 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 a video that was taken, a film that was taken of Oral Roberts about to lay his hands on a woman who had bad eyesight. One hand was paralyzed and, and couldn't move it and, and she, she had little feeling in the other. And he said to her, I did just what he did. By the way. <laughs> he said, now, he said, Christ Jesus is right here. He wanted to paint a picture to her. He said, Christ Jesus is right here. And he is saying, lay your hands on her. Mm. And she looked at him. And so then he laid his hands on her and just took his hands off of her. And she had both hands up here doing this. Mm, praise God. And she looked at her hands. Glory. <laughs> oh, she, and, and he said, what about your eyes? She said, I see clear as a bell. The Lord. But he gave her, he said, he's right here. Because you see, the night he was healed of tuberculosis and delivered from stammering and stuttering, the Spirit of the Lord said, you will take my healing power to your generation. You will do it. And he sought it and, and, and he, he, he got to the point where he, he just fell in the floor of, of their home there in, in, in Enid because that was on the inside of him. Mm -hmm. mm. Christ in him, the hope of right. glory. In fact, he used the word Christ when he spoke to her. Mm. And she was just visibly changed. Well, Orb Roberts is a man who knows what that means when he says it. Yes. He's not just saying a word. He has a revelation. Yes. He knows him. At In that the way. power of his resurrection. In the power of his resurrection. Because of, of, and he'd been raised yes, by him yes, himself. He, he was dying. He, now, he's six foot three in his bare feet. And his brother picked him up like a baby and took him out of the bedroom and put him in the back seat of the car. Mm. He was skin and bones. He had coughed blood up until it spattered the whole wall of the bedroom. And he stuttered so badly that he stood before a class in school. He couldn't say his name. So he knew the resurrection. Yes, he did. <coughs> Let me show you one, if you would, exactly on this in Luke chapter 4. Just oh. after where, where, after 18, where the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, is anointing me to preach the gospel of the poor. Down here in verse, um, verse 32, and they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. Oh, yes. Don't verse, you love it? Verse 33, and in the synagogue there was a man who had a spirit of an unclean devil and cried out with a loud voice saying, let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee, who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus, look at there, here it is, rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace, come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and hurt him not. And they were all amazed and spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power he commands unclean spirits, and they come out. Mm -hmm. He rebuked him. Matthew chapter 8. Uh-huh. 
Now I have healing scriptures. When I walk into my, I walk into my bathroom, and right there, where I stand in front of the mirror, right in the same spot where I shave every day, and but first, absolutely first, I have the healing scriptures scotched. I wrote them out where I didn't have to just quote them. <laughs> Put them before my eyes every morning. And there are the healing scriptures. In a, and it comes down to this one in Matthew 8. And um, look at the 16th verse. No, wait, 14th verse. Mm -hmm. When Jesus was coming to Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever. He touched her hand and the fever left her. And she arose and ministered unto them. When evening was come, they brought unto him, how many? Multitude. Many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word. And healed all. The word. That's right. But he had to speak it. He couldn't That's it. think it. That's it. The power was in his words. You see it? He had to speak it. God had to speak it. And I heard uh, Kenneth Hagin say more than once, whatever you say is your faith speaking. When you said, well, I just don't know about that, that was your faith speaking. Mm -mm -mm. Which is not any. <laughs> and unbelief is zero faith. But it's not non-belief. You can't, we're human beings. We believe all the time. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. You're all the time believing something. Mm -hmm. you, you believe, well, I believe I'm going to go to the store. Well, I don't know whether I'll go to the store or not. Well, I don't think I will. Double-minded. Yeah. But when you say, you know, Greg, I believe I'm going to the store. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going. You believe that. Now you've made a decision of quality. Which is a decision about which there's no argument and from which there's no retreat. Amen. You're going to the store. I don't care if you have a thunderstorm. <laughs> That's right. It all wraps around the human heart and the ability to believe beyond what your mind thinks. And he cast out the spirits with his word, healed all that were sick, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Glory. So many times God uses the rebuke against the enemy, not against people, no. but against the enemy. I found the same word in Hebrew in, in Psalm 106, 9, where God rebuked the Red Sea and it parted. Let's look at the 107th Psalm. Okay. <laughs> We need another hour. Ooh. I thought about that 106th yesterday. 106.9, that's where it is. He rebuked the Red Sea. Yes. And, but look in 107. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. For His mercy, His hesed endures yes, forever. forever. <laughs> Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. It doesn't do anything to, oh, I think I'm redeemed. <laughs> I'm redeemed. From what? Poverty, sickness, lack. The curse of the law. Curse. I'm redeemed from the curse of the law. In verse 17, fools because of their transgressions and because of their iniquities are afflicted. Their soul abhorreth all manner of meat, and they draw near unto the gates of death. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and He saves them out of their distresses. He sent His word yes. and healed them and delivered them from their yes. distresses. Yes. Glory yes. to God. Hallelujah. Woo. That's right on the heels of the 103rd Psalm. And we only got 15 seconds left. <laughs> I believe we said we'll be back. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yes, glory to God. This year, experience wide open faith at the Southwest Believers Convention. 
right here in the beautiful city of Fort Worth in the great state of Texas. You tend to yourself and you show love and you show compassion and you walk strong and you walk right because power follows that. Power follows holiness. Power follows righteousness. Power follows it. The power to deliver. The power to stand healed and whole and well. The power to have plenty. The power to be supplied. The power to snatch people out of hell follows a church that is separated unto him. We are supposed to be praying and I'm not supposed to be preaching, but I cannot help myself. This year, experience wide open faith at the Southwest Believers Convention. So come get a taste of Texas and save the date for August 1st through the 6th for the Southwest Believers Convention. Register today at kcm.org slash southwest. Hallelujah. As a born again child of God, you have a covenant that is guaranteed by the blood of Jesus. That means every promise God made in his word is rightfully yours. Jesus said in John 16, 23, Whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. It's through him. It's through his name. It's through his blood that we have legal access to the blessing of the Lord. Well, today is offering day on the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast, and we'd like to present you with an opportunity to respond to the word that you've heard. One of the guaranteed promises of God is found in Galatians chapter 6, verses 6 and 7. It says, Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teaches in all good things. Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. When you sow into the word, you receive. You then qualify to reap a harvest. Kenneth and Gloria Copeland appreciate our partners and our friends for all of your faithfulness to Kenneth Copeland Ministries and to God. Your financial seeds and your prayers have helped us send this uncompromised word of faith from the top of the world to the bottom and all the way around the middle on every available voice. Every download, Every book, every magazine, every social media post, every Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast and meeting is bringing more souls into the kingdom. And it's helping believers grow and strengthen in their faith. Father, I thank you for all of those who have given today and thank you that you are multiplying that seed and they are reaping a mighty harvest. In Jesus' name. Thank you for being with us today. And don't miss all next week. Professor Greg's going to be here all next week, and we're going to get into some delicious stuff again <laughs> next week. Until then, this is Kenneth Copeland, Greg Stevens, and all of our class here reminding you that God loves you, and we love you, and Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Lord. Amen. So give him praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Kenneth Copeland Ministries is here for you. Go to kcm.org.uk to watch or download the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Read faith-based content in the Believer's Voice of Victory interactive magazine or in our daily devotional, From Faith to Faith, all available to you free. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might.